Welcome to Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. Today we're back at San Juan Oaks, and uh, even though it's a dark and stormy night, it's really nasty. First of all, I've got to thank the crew for coming out on a night like this to, to do this shoot. But we're painting a beautiful sunshine picture uh, on a really nasty, nasty night out there. So today we're going to go to part two. You're going to look at a wall like you've never seen it, and I'm going to get started. Okay, last time we did all the shadows, we did the sky, and uh, pretty much left all the, the white white. And today I'm going to start infusing some color in the wall, and we'll see what happens. Hopefully this thing will really pop. So I'm going to take some white, lots of white, and mix it with some warmer colors. and start start attacking the wall got to put a lot of warmth in here it was a really i'm working on some more paintings of san juan oaks at home and i'm really glad that uh, i've been able to get the quality of light that you get out there and so i, I want to do the same thing with this painting really get that to pop so I mix it with some Cad Yellow Deep, and that's just too puny. <laughs> it needs, needs some more pop. There. It's kind of like the three bears. That was almost too much. So I'm going to move that over, get some white. And, and I'll put some down and see what happens first. I might be judging it too early. I tell you guys not to do that, but I do it all the time. OK, so let's put a little bit of this down. It's very similar to what was over there, and uh, I, didn't, I didn't like it there, so it didn't make a difference. <laughs> so I'm going to move it over and grab some more weight. It's a little test section. What I liked about the white canvas is that this really made it pop, and it almost diluted it with, with some of the warmth that I put in there. So I'm going to change that. And go into some straight white. And you probably can't, <laughs> probably can't tell that I'm painting anything on here. I'm actually going to start with this part that you're probably not even going to be able to see real well here and make that pop first. I'm testing it over what's already been done. A little different when we start on part two because it's not just starting from a white canvas. It really going over areas that have already been painted so you can see what the different stages are. I like that. That gives the wall some soul. Hey! That was great. So what did I do? I had a, an area that was already painted and I s kind of scrubbed over it. You know it, It's like playing the drums again. This, this, this canvas is great for that. It's really stretched tight. Okay, I'm liking this color here. There's a little bit of blue underneath. You can see that. And I want to get a nice clean, clean line here to really make that wall edge pop. I don't care if it's exactly perfect. Stucco's got some variations, so that's okay. I also want to change little bits of color here and there too, so that it's not all the same color. Because walls are not the same color all, all over the place. So I'm going to put in a base coat and then add, that's the easiest way to do it, and then add a little bit here and there. I'm going to go right over this little line here because that's too dark for what was there. And I'm also erasing my little pencil line. And that might have been too much, but that's nice. You can just wipe a little bit of that off with a paper towel. So it still has the same effect. That was good. Yeah, I like this. This is working out well. Now, one thing I'm noticing is that I usually take great care to, to clean my brushes. And I can tell 
that I didn't do a good job the <laughs> last time I cleaned this brush. Because as I'm painting the golden colors, there's a lot of blue emerging. And um, I could get a different brush, or I could say, hey, what the heck, let's, let's see what happens here. So I'm in what the heck mode, let's, let's see what happens. Um, so I can't say that I meant to do this. This is, this is one of those little accidents. I thought I cleaned them better than, than I did. Okay. Yep, a little bit of blue is good. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to mix some paint, and as I'm going for it, there's a gnat right in my... <laughs> I didn't know if somebody caught that or not, because I just smashed it right in my, right in my liquid. Adding a little bit of extra color here. Let's see, does that have uh, that needs more of a shadow, I think. I'll fix that later. Or adjust it. And I'm not worried whether I go over what's already been painted. And if I, you, can, you can do one of two things, either leave it or just simply just kind of clean it up a little bit with a paper towel. Okay. Now, in the home studio, I tend to have a paper towel in my hand at all times. Um, and that's not necessarily a good thing because if you paint for a long period of time, you could actually get, have some problems with your wrist because you're, you're grabbing something like this. So I do try to put it down. When you paint as much as I do, you gotta gotta take care of your hands and your wrists. I got some great emails um, since the last time we we met. And no, I don't usually wear heels <laughs> in the studio when I'm painting at home. Um, <laughs> I do on TV. I like the, the range of questions that I get. And I'm grateful for the appreciation. Okay, so we got that, that blocked in. I'm gonna block in this. I do like that wall so much better. Okay. That's good. Now, an easier way to do this is to actually, because I'm not worried, and, and, and we know pretty much what, what color this is going to be, one solid color until we put the other splotches in. So what would be an easy way to do this? I'm actually going to pick up the canvas. This puppy's heavy. And turn it around on its side. And I'll lift it up so you guys can still see. Okay. <laughs> if I can reach. Yep, see those heels come in handy. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is paint this side and just slap it on. And you know what? Some of that blue is still coming off, and I'm still in oh well mode. That's all right. I'm going to grab a little bit of warmth, though, because I'm, I'm boring myself with the color. And if I'm boring myself, I've got to be boring you guys. Well, you probably have more patience than I do. Somebody said you have to have a lot of patience to paint. Um, that's not true. Uh, I'm not a real patient person. I've, I've become more patient as I've as I paint, learn to paint. And what I do to, to combat that is I have several canvases, se several paintings going at the same time in the studio. And that way I'm always in the mood to work on one of them. 
So I don't have to wait for one to dry. Boy, we're getting some great music from this canvas. See where I missed a spot. I'm always missing a spot here. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of warmth to that. And You know, it's good to, to flip your painting around and not just, just start applying the paint and not worry about what it is you're painting because then, then you get more into the process and less, less concerned about making a nose or an ear or part of a wall. You're just more concerned with whether the paint is beautiful. I mean, one of the things that, that my teacher Michael used to always say, you know, that's a good likeness, but is it a painting? So at this stage, I'm more concerned with making it a painting than a likeness. The other day, my, I was really, really sore, and I was trying to figure out why, why my shoulder and my arm was sore. <laughs> pretty silly, but I was working on this huge canvas. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, I guess because I was thinking, God, I wasn't, I wasn't doing anything different exercises, but it's a good workout. Okay, no blonde jokes. I hear that. Yep, that blue is actually a nice thing, even though I didn't clean it really well. Well, that was a lot easier than, than uh, having to scrunch down, and it's a lot easier for you to see that way, I'm hoping. Um, I'll just touch this up a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to start adding some color to the wall. And I'm just going to throw in little bits of, of warmth here and there just to give it some interest. And I might clean up this little ledge. I might not. I want to spend some time on the roof. Me, who doesn't really like heights, I'm going to hang out on the roof for a lot of this so you can see how to block that in. Okay. Got the main part of that blocked in. Now I'm going to grab some Indian yellow. You know I love that color. And probably some cat yellow deep. And since I already have white on the canvas, I'm going to go into some straight tube color. And just kind of Scribble. Scribbling's good. I don't know if you remember from last time, we have a little, you can see a little bit of this blue underneath here from, from a previous little error, but I, I like that the blue's there. It adds some interest. So I want this to be subtle. I don't want it to be in your face, but I do want some color changes. There's a time for in your face, and this isn't this isn't it. Ooh, that's pretty. Sometimes I I fall in love with a little section, and we've talked about this before, where it's too early, and I have to kill it later. I hate that when I have to kill it later. But if it's not for the good of the whole painting, if it's just one little blob where you love a blob, but it doesn't doesn't work with everybody else, um, you gotta kill it. Got to be harmonious. And you know what? I haven't put any red in here yet. That's probably what's what's holding me up. But I'll put plenty on the roof, so we'll see what happens there. I'm gonna flip the canvas over just just when things get set up. 
and um, go back to its normal state and start working on the roof. And if we have time, I'll go back to the wall. But I really want to make sure we have time before we do. Okay, so even on its side, it's still still looking three-dimensional. You can still tell that it's a, a wall. Um, before I flip it, I'm going to lower lower the canvas or lower the lower the easel because even with heels, I will not be able to reach it at that point. So I'm going to lower this first. Making sure the peg is in there securely because it always scares me when it just falls and now I'm turning it. These are heavy duty stretcher bars. I should show you what I'm talking about. Okay, now I'm going to turn the canvas around so you can see the back. The really thick, really thick heavy duty stretcher bars. It's very, very well made. Okay. That looks like it's not going to fall down. Now it's time to do some tile. Uh, you know, it, before I go to the tile, I could start picking apart the wall, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I've got to cover the canvas first before I start judging. So I'm going to move over some of my paint on the palette. I will still use this, but I need the room. So I'll move this over here. It's just like getting a, you know, you clean your palette when you try a different wine. Well, we're going to a different area, so. All right, let's see. We want, we want red. Red. You know, even the tile roof isn't that red at San Juan Oaks, and um, it's more of a burnt, mellow color. But you know what? That's why we're painting. <laughs> you can make it any color you want. And uh, I'm going for the cad red light because I love it. And... Uh, I'll tone it down maybe just a little bit, but for when I first put it down, I think I might do it straight. And I'll start with some doxazine purple, which is also known as, it's, it's, it's one of those also known pigments, as carbazole violet. So if I, and, and there are times when I'll say carbazole violet and times when I'll say deoxazine purple. I really mean the same thing, and I should say the same thing all the time, but I don't. All right, so I'm going to use the, the violet just to make a map of where I want to go. What kind of brush am I looking for? A flat one. This one might be a little too big, so there we go. I wanted a flat, flat brush to do the ridges. And I got white in there somehow. I didn't want that. I don't want to dilute the purple. Okay, so I'm going to start with a few of these ridges here and just put these in. Roughly, I don't want them to be uniform. And I'm, I'm almost doing them in a random way so that I don't make everything the same size. Because the tendency is to try to make everything tidy and it, it doesn't work that way. Then it looks fake. Okay, that's a good start. And then the base of the roof. I'm going to just squiggle that. Need a little shadow. And also, if I didn't like what the reference photo was doing, it, um, it really doesn't give you a lot of information. So, make it up. What would you like to see it do? Now, how do you know what a tile roof does? Well, for me, it's pretty... It, it, um, okay, I guess the best way to say it is I live in a neighborhood where we, all we have are tile roofs. And... Um, and my treadmill's in the garage. When you look out the window, all you see are, you know, I don't watch TV while I'm on the treadmill. I, I kind of look, space out and look at the 
tile roofs. <laughs> so, so it's good you can study them and, and si you know, see what they do. And one thing I noticed is that light hits, it's not that every tile in the sunlight's the same color. There are lots of different colors within the same sunlight area, and there are lots of different colors within the, the shade area. So the randomness of it is really what makes it work or not work. And so the thing that I struggle against when I'm doing this is that I, I try to make it tidy and make it all uniform, and that, that's what makes it not look real. All right, so you've always got a light side and dark side of the tile, just like the moon and Pink Floyd. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just maybe in the middle, and... Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to pick a side. Okay, if the, if the shadow is coming here, you've got light here, this is in shadow. So we're going to put light on that side, shadow I guess would be on this, this side to be consistent. I'm going to put some shadow here, throw some color here. Ooh, and up top, you know, way to get some good instant gratification. I'm getting a clean brush. I totally got distracted, okay? I started with one part of the tile, and I was going to do them systematically. And, I, and then I'm just like a kid, and I saw this one place that I thought, this would be fine. So if I was home in the studio, that's what I'd do. I'd go attack that place, and um, I'm going to do that right now. <laughs> there's what you're supposed to do, and then there's how I really paint. And I show you how I really paint. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to add because I know this is just going to be happy. A little bit of uh, cad yellow deep right at the top where it hits this blue. Because I know they're going to be sympathetic to each other. And if I stand back and look, yep, that's going to make that pop. And I will add some light to that. with a clean brush. That might not be bright enough. I think I might need to grab the Indian yellow. Yeah, that's good. If it's not good, I would tell you too. And then I can throw some red in there. But what happens is that really, when you, that little bit of light against the blue, you really get that separation sense of space. And in all the paintings that I do, space is really important to me. I'm, I, I like a lot of space. I'm doing one now, a painting now that's, that's cr what, it's called a crowded composition where there are tons of items and they're all just packed into this composition. And the only way I can do something like that is if I paint it really, really big. So it's, uh, it's 48 by 60. And uh, <laughs> it, works, it works for me because it's huge. That's the only way I can do something that's that crowded. Either way, it all comes down to using a lot of space. Okay, so now I'm going back to the systematic part that I was supposed to show you before. And I'm going to add a little bit of red here. That's happy. Red is happy. Like the sock monkey smile. Okay, so I started with the shadow side, and I'll continue some of that. There's like the shadow side of the tile, plus there's the uh, a little dip, which will be darker. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go all over the canvas so that I'm not putting the same color everywhere and the same shape, because these aren't the same shape. All right, now I can throw in some darker, maybe some violet. But I want another, another clean brush. This one's uh, 
very splayed. The ends are very splayed, and I still use it because it's effective, but it's getting close to throw out. So we'll see, we'll see if this works. If not, I may throw it out. Yeah, it's time to let it go. Goodbye. <laughs> Get another brush. This is better. Next to that, I'll add some more dark. It's a systematic of dark, dark, medium, and light. And I'm blending as I, I'm, I'm not hitting as hard, and I'm blending in each little area. So it's not as noticeable where the, the red and the violet meet. And I get back, and that just looks like red blobs. And that's good. That's what it's supposed to look like so far. And I'll add some light. None of it makes sense until you get it all next to each other. Okay. So if you put light right here, that might be a little too loud. I'm guilty of that sometimes. Okay, I'll add some cad yellow deep. Michael would call them screamers. You can do screamers as long as they're harmonious with their neighbors. Yeah, that, that's working. Okay, so now I need to go back into here. The dark next to the light is what really makes that whole thing start to turn and get form. What happens is all of a sudden I get really, really quiet, and that's because I get sucked into the painting. So I'm pulling myself out here <laughs> to tell you what I'm doing. I'm sure that happens to you guys. You get, get lost. All right, now I'll add some red. See why I didn't start this roof last time? That's all you would have seen. Okay. Some more red there. And then the yellow. I'm pulling I'm pulling the warm I'm starting at opposite ends and then pulling it into each other. Let's see if this is working. I love the color. I don't know if it's <laughs> I don't know if it's working or not, but I love the color. Okay. Yeah, it's working. Starting to turn. Nowhere anywhere. <laughs> Not even close to the reference photo, because it's a lot more subdued there. But I already had it in my mind that this was not going to be a subdued painting. And of course, I'll bring it back next time so you can see. Now, you know, I'm, I'm not liking these. Uh, these lines were not that far off. So when I'm looking at my drawing, I think I need to start correcting that. So I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to 
kind of erase that that was there. Pretend it wasn't there. And put in some new ones. See, you can change your mind, redo your drawing. That's a good thing about oils. You can really figure out what you're doing. Okay, so then I'll add some violet, and I'm going to do the same thing for each one. Hopefully it'll go a lot faster so you won't be bored here watching me paint tile. Now, I really, you know, uh, this is one of those paintings that uh, normally I'm telling you guys all kinds of stories. This is one of those paintings that is just sucking me. <laughs> I just get lost in this painting. So I'm, I'm pulling myself out again. A good exercise would be to try, would be for you guys to try to um, talk to somebody while you're painting and see the difference in, in how you paint and, and uh, there are certain subjects that will pull you in more than others, and, and certain days where you're in a different place. And today must be more contemplative because I keep getting sucked in. Maybe it's the reds. You guys know I love red. Okay, that's starting to... Yep, that's starting to take some shape. Like that. Better to like it than to not be happy with it. Okay. Well, let me see if I can whip out some more tile because I don't want to I don't want to have to do the whole thing and really bore you guys with tile the whole time. So I'm going to do another row, see how fast that is, and then maybe switch gears a little bit. And hope <laughs> hopefully I'll get pulled out of this. And I think the other, the other thing that happens is when you first start a painting, there are different stages in a painting. When you first, or for me anyway, when I, when I first start one, you're attacking the canvas. You're all over it. You're covering it. It's fast. And so it's not such a contemplative thing. You're just really kind of attacking it. And then there's a second stage where it is more contemplative. And you, you think, oh, I'll do a little bit here. I'll do a little bit there. And that's kind of what's going on with this painting. And then the last part of a painting is really, for me, it's very slow. So I sit back and look at it, and then maybe a few strokes, and then I come back and take a look, and then maybe a few things here and there. And so that's, that may be just a result, what's going on today may be a result of this being step two in the painting as opposed to, you know, the initial attack of the canvas. Normally, it's an, it's, it is a huge attack, and I try to get as much done in an hour as I can. I can't believe how much time's already passed. Okay. So how can I get out of that? I'm going to start putting some dark and just really putting it in quickly. I'll paint like it's the first, uh, first time I've ever seen it. I'm just slapping it on. Who knows? They might have uh, might have some more interesting tile things going on by doing this. I don't know about that roof line there, but I'll just I'll just throw up some color and see what happens. So this is definitely more systematic and slapping it on by throwing some color down here. How would I do it if I were at home in the studio? I probably would be slow and piddly and it would be <laughs> it would be a 
three or four hour session and I would just be doing tiles. But you know what, you got to be in the mood to do that. So there are days, that's why it's great to have more than one painting going. There are days when I just don't feel like doing that and I just want some instant gratification. So when you're in that kind of mode, painting tiles is not, not the place to be. All right, let's see. Let's get some, slap some yellow down. Again, the biggest thing that's going to make this stuff turn or make it look three-dimensional is that dark against light against dark against light. The rhythm of the tile. Just like the, the brush has a rhythm when you're beating on the canvas here, the tile has a rhythm of a pattern. I'm starting on the edges. You know, notice that I, I, I'm going to put the middle in last. So I did the darks and the lights, and then I'll sneak up on the middle. Can you do it any other way? You can do it tons of different ways. This is just the way I'm approaching it. I thought of a good uh, painting for next time. I'm going to take a picture of what, what you usually see when you see the first part of the show. So the still life of the monkey and the brushes and all that copper and all those reflections and see what we can do with that. Okay, that's happy. Start throwing some more red in. Hopefully I can get that done quickly. I do appreciate the emails. It, it, it lets me know whether I'm on track and what you'd like to see. I know there's still been some requests for cleaning brushes, and one of these days we'll get to that. Not today. <laughs> too many tiles to do. But you notice that the other rows are coming down a lot faster than the, the initial one. Okay. I'm getting sucked in again. I think my director, I can't hear her because she's in, she's in a room way in the back, but you know, I, I, I can hear her laughing in my head. I just know she is. It's like, Shannon, pretty soon they'll get, they'll get a floor manager out here to start throwing things at me. It's like, oh, hello, you're on TV. You're supposed to be talking to people. Okay, even if she's not laughing, you should see the crew. Sorry, guys. Now we're almost through with the tile, and I won't get sucked in so much. I'm going to step back. Yep, see, that's totally taken form. That's uh, happy. You want to know what sad tile looks like? <laughs> I have painted some sad tile, I got to tell you. But I don't want to show you. We're getting closer. Okay. Also, by leaving some of the white, uh, it really helps with the irregularity. Which is a key to keeping this thing three dimensional. And it's important to go all the way to the edge too. Some people just neglect the edge like it like it doesn't count, but it, it does. It's part of that surface. So 
Okay, I'm going to put a little, a little bit of darker violet in here to help that turn. I'm mixing it right into the red. Hey, we have three rows done. I may go back to the tile, but I think I need to throw some paint on the wall. <laughs> because <laughs> because uh, I've spent the whole show painting tile, and I know I've got to be boring you. Okay. <laughs> painting tile and not talking is not a good thing. Okay. Let's see. Maybe we need to add some red to the wall. I'm just doing a subtle scrub. Maybe we don't need to be subtle. <laughs> Maybe I can just slap in some uh, some cad yellow. Yeah, kind of like a Marcus Zorro on here. Let's do a Marcus Shannon. Woo! Yeah, I'm liking that. Gotta have some fun with the paint. Well, at least they're not throwing things at me anymore. <laughs> not that they don't want to. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a lot better. It's got some more life to it. Now I need to attack this big part of the wall. Yeah, I like to put some blue under there. That would really be happy. Okay. Finish the yellow. Finish one thing first. Oh, I just got all this red on, on my brush and I almost did it. <laughs> that was not a, that was not on purpose. A little bit of red is good. And usually, you know, I love red, but um, that would have been way too much. So see, that's just after wiping. See how strong that is compared to all the white that's there? So I could compound that by scrubbing it more in with the brush or I could take a paper towel and really scrub it. And then I think I'll throw some yellow over the top. And it might as well be Indian yellow because, yeah. So although that's strong, it's not gonna, I was gonna say, hopefully it won't hurt it, but that was pretty, that was pretty good. Okay. Well, we're just waking up this painting, woohoo! Show you for paint and tile all the whole time. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a bit much. Throwing a little bit of white over the top. This is one of those where it's gonna have to dry before I'm gonna be able to tone it down a little bit. And I need to get some distance from it. I might not want to tone it down. Maybe I like it bright. I think what I'd like to do though is I see this the shadow under the uh, the shadow under the tile. I want to I want to put some more violet and blue with that. Moving over to a little bit of a cool side. So I'm going to grab some ultramarine blue. See, I woke up when I got away from that tile. That might be a little too blue, but um, let me just see. You know what? I like it. It might work. And I love that blue and yellow combination. Oops. You know what happened? <laughs> the brush got caught in my hair and I just sprayed paint everywhere. Okay. On other TV shows, they might cut that out. <laughs> what you see is what you get here. 
Okay, let's see how this blue works. I like the blue. I know, I sound like I'm surprised. Well, I am. I'll throw in a little bit of blue, and I'm going to actually grab some straight blue. This is one of those, if a little bit is good, a lot is better. Maybe not, but <laughs> it's worth a shot. I, I like the, I love, always love this blue and yellow combination. And you probably can't see it because I'm standing right in front of it. So let me get off to the side here. It's probably a little bit too bright for a shadow. And I'm going to see if I can pull it off. Oh, that reminds me. There was another shadow I wanted to play with. That's good. I don't know if I'm going to keep the green under there. I think that was, yeah, see, I like the blue and yellow. That's nice. I think the green was a little bit much. It, it, you know what? It felt good last time, but no, I'm, <laughs> I'm not there anymore. So I think I'll put some blue under there, too. So that's, that's the danger of, of painting things on different, coming back to a painting. You might be in a different place than you were last time. Ooh, I like that blue. And you know what? This might be just too dark, too. So I'm going to tone it down just a little bit. Maybe that was too much. But I did want to get rid of that green. It was a good idea in theory, but once you get it on the canvas, like, no. Okay. As soon as I get anywhere near that tile, I start getting quiet. That's not good. So we're going to get away from, step away from the tile. And what was this little piece? I don't even know what that was in the reference photo. I think that was some sort of little header, header deal there. And I'm going to make that a little bit cooler and lighter. That's so more sympathetic with the blue. Okay. Yeah, I like that. That actually is giving some, some distance there. That's good. All right, so I need to play with this shadow here. This needs to be, I'll add this a little bit, make that a little more pronounced. And you know, as long as we're going with this little blue and yellow thing happening, let's, let's put some more up here. And I think the shadow needs to be whiter. It was pretty puny before. And then right under the lip needs to be darker. So I'm going to add some more blue because I'm just in the mood. And a little bit of violet. Because violet... Um, is the true complement to that yellow that's there. But you know, I don't always have to do the true complement. If you like something better, and it works. Okay, that's working. Notice how I, I get anywhere near that tile and it just starts shutting up there. Okay, that's given that. I can still make this even more pronounced by just slowly putting in that line there. Okay, so I need to step back and look at it. Yep, now that's giving that more form. Uh, let's see, we'll, we'll clean this up a little bit. And uh, let me just tidy up some of my edges here. I like how there's, this is uneven here. It adds interest. And this needs to be more pronounced in order for that to work. I just grabbed some blue, which I didn't, I didn't mean to do. Whoops. 
Okay, what do I need to do? How, how is, how's this shadow doing? I haven't even addressed this since last time. And is this working or is it not working? It's working pretty good. Um, actually, it's working pretty good. So, mm, do I want to mess with that, with the amount of time that we have left? <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to throw a little bit of lighter blue. I'm going to push it because I just have to. Throw a little bit of lighter blue just right in here. This is going to be some sympathetic. Uh, you know what? That wasn't light enough compared to what was there. So I'll grab a little bit of white. And mix that in and see, see how that does. And what I'm going to do is, is uh, sometimes I, when I get to this point, I paint by looking in the mirror because I get that distance. So I don't even look at the painting. I see if it's working. You know, and I've got that mirror back there that I can check out. So I don't even look at the canvas. I'm like painting in the mirror. It's like those, OK, if you're my age or older, there were weather girls <laughs> that used to paint, or not paint, they would draw backwards on the, uh, the weather, the temperature on, the, on these walls. And so they weren't even looking at what they were doing. And um, that's, that kind of reminds me of what I'm doing here when I, when I try to get some distance on it. I'm not even looking at the painting. I look in the mirror and see, hey, is it working at, from a distance as I'm painting it? And if so, then I keep doing it. Uh, I like what that's doing, so I, I'm going to do that. And uh, I'm going to throw in a little more color here. There are things that... that uh, you can tell when you're right on top of them that they're working, and there are things you definitely need to get some distance. That was uh, really warm at the top, and this is on the shadow side. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add some blue to this. I don't want it to totally match, but I, I do want some. It was, I, I got a little crazy with the warmth. So I'm going to add a little blue. It was just a little too green for me. I do like that little bit of red popping up there. Of course I would. Don't worry, I am not looking at the tile. It's just out of the corner of my eye. I'm pretending it's not there. Okay, that, tone that down, that's good. So then there's some added color there. What are we going to do in the last few minutes um, with these bushes? Need to do something with these bushes. Um, keep them, throw them out. Yeah, we can keep them. Well, let's throw in a little, what do I want to put over the top of that? Maybe, do I want to get loud or not? No, we have to be a little restrained, so I'm going to grab some uh, permanent green and put that right over the purple, which, gosh, you know, this has got to be hard to see. So I'm going to move this way back because there's just an area you really can't see. This is a way of giving this some distance. I'm going to have to have some, I'm going to paint this in the mirror too. Some, oops, that was a color I didn't want. And you know what, let's, I need some loud, a little bit of loud, brighter color here just because, yeah. It was just too subdued for me. And of course it's not that bright and not that green there, but um, <laughs> it's my painting. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. Okay, so we didn't get this didn't get this painting done, but it's definitely taken some shape, and you can get an idea of what to do with the tile and what to do with the wall and what to do with the sky to make things look three dimensional. 
will I will bring it back next time just so you can see what I did to complete it but no I'm not gonna torture you with another episode <laughs> let's see her paint tile again no I'm not gonna do that um, yeah I could spend again I could spend a lot of time on that tile and and uh, I would drive you nuts so uh, what I would do to finish this painting I would definitely lighten up the sky a little bit here but I, I like this I really like the stark contrast here even though it's not totally natural I don't care I, I like it um, I would finish the tile and I would continue to add little bits of color here and there so that the wall really had a lot of character and you got a naked wall like this you really have to add little bits of you know and, and I'm daring not to put in windows not to put in bushes trees anything so if you're going to keep it that naked, you definitely need to have some sort of interest there. So I'm definitely going to add a little more texture, more subtlety, lots more color. And um, you'll just have to see this time, you know, the next time you, you see, give your wall some soul. So what are we going to work on next time? Yeah, I think we're going back to a still life. And it'll probably be what you see the first part of the show where you see the sock monkey and all the copper and all the brushes. Although the, the only the only difference is is that the still life is going to be this big and and the painting is going to be huge. <laughs> so the other thing that I, that I hope you got on the show was, uh, you know, there are several stages to a painting. So the first part is attack the canvas. The second part is more contemplative and quiet. Sorry that I kept getting sucked in today, and uh, <laughs> and uh, and the third part is quieter too. So until next time, have, have a great holiday, and um, thanks again to the crew for coming out on such a nasty night. Thanks again. I'm Shannon Grissom.